I know that when people release videos in the social media landscape, people get annoyed by sensationalist titles. And you could accuse me of doing that exactly right here. But what if the title is exactly right? As in, you could change one minuscule thing that you probably will never notice, and it could save you from suffering a stroke, a heart attack, or otherwise. Well, I ain't yanking your chain. I'm not actually entirely sure which chain that is, but I ain't yanking any chains if it is a chain. There's a study that released wherein the researchers simply switched out one condiment from hundreds of villages in rural China and then measured over five years the amount of heart attacks, stroke, and other cardiovascular issues that occurred in people who were subject to the switch versus those that were not subject to the switch. It's really as simple as that. If we turn to the data and focus in on two important metrics related to cardiovascular health, systolic and diastolic blood pressure, we can see the measurement times all the way up to five years at 60 months there on the left side. We can see the number of participants under each condition, the non-switched indicated as regular and the substituted. Then further to the right, we see the results. Essentially, if the dots and the horizontal lines on either side of each dot moves to the left of the vertical line, that indicates a blood pressure lowering effect. The numbers on the far right are what the dot and lines represent, the values. Okay, that explained, I don't know about you, but it seems like the dots and the lines are shifting mostly to the left, indicating an effect. The exact uh, magnitude of the effect really matters a great deal too. So the overall drop in systolic blood pressure was a little over three units. Not much, honestly, but we often underestimate how much small effects compound over time. So we'll look at the actual outcome data, the actual heart attacks and such next. Before we do, I'd be remiss not to point out two things to keep in mind. One, the effect on diastolic blood pressure, which is the lower number when you get your blood pressure checked, is really tiny, closer to half a unit reduction. So is that really meaningful? Well, we'll still find out. Second, however, and importantly, the researchers did not indicate the statistical significance of the data that we just went over. And if we look at some of the confidence intervals, the horizontal lines, especially in the diastolic blood pressure, because they're so wide and clearly extend well into the neutral middle line, it doesn't inspire confidence. Although they are confident intervals. <laughs> okay, that was too good not to throw in there. Anyway, regardless, it seems like there's an effect in reducing systolic blood pressure. But as I mentioned, we should be getting into the actual outcome. So what does that look like? Here, the way to read this is the substitute condition is the red dotted line, and the blue is the non-substitute, the regular condition. The years as months are on the horizontal axis, and the vertical axis is the relative amount of MACE, or major adverse cardiovascular events, which includes the number of heart attacks, stroke, and so on. In simple English, if the lines go up, that's bad. So both do go up, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they both are bad, because the experiment is set up to only compare between the two conditions that we have. So the appropriate conclusion here, and confirmed statistically this time, is that the substitute reduced the risk of all of these cardiovascular problems that we just went over. To be clear, the effect is small, but considering how freaking easy that this change is, any improvement is impressive and will save multiple people's lives. Oh, and the researchers measured stroke independently, which was their primary outcome, and found the same results. Okay, now, what is this substitution? Okay, as usual, some people will be angry that it's been held out for so long, but unfortunately, social media rewards longer engagement and suppresses work where people leave early, which disincentivizes creators from giving the answer immediately. Also, considering creators spend hundreds of dollars creating these videos, I spent about 200 bucks on this one, 
I don't find it too criminal to have a person be forced to listen to me showing my work like an eighth grade algebra. I still don't really understand how the letters turn into numbers. 2x plus y equals z. Okay, if you say so. Anyway, as you've likely guessed from all the clues that I've given you earlier, the answer is switching out salt. Cue the timestamps to this part of the video. But there's more because that's only half the equation. You need to know what to switch it out with. And in addition, how it can be potentially dangerous to substitute salt entirely. Well, we'll get into that. Before we do, there's more in this analysis on how the substitution affects different people based on body weight, age, cardiovascular disease status, and more. Does salt substitution possibly not affect certain people? Does it affect some people more than others? Well, I'll be getting into that in the extended version of this video, which is included in the Physionic Insiders community, along with my monthly podcast on all the latest research, summaries of all my videos, research reviews that I write, and much, much more. If you're interested in access to all that, just uh, join the Physionic Insiders community. There's a link in the description. I'd also like to briefly add that this study, although it had many strengths, was an open label study, which means that the participants knew that they were in the salt substitute or not. I don't actually believe that influences the results here too much, but it's one weakness that I should point out. Okay, so we know that they substituted salt, but with what? The answer is potassium chloride. But as I mentioned, substituting too much potassium can also be harmful at least in people with kidney issues, because the imbalance of potassium and sodium, the main ion in salt, can lead to heart problems, the exact opposite of what we want. Naturally, consult with your physician and a dietitian, but the researchers substituted the 100% or near 100% sodium chloride in regular salt to a concentration of 75% sodium chloride and 25% potassium chloride to see these protective effects witnessed in this study. That all said, you know that there are other small things that can make a difference on your heart health. I'll detail more of them right here. Thanks for watching to the end. I appreciate it.